So today we are doing another kettlebell and body weight workout. Uh, so it's going to be about 30 minutes long and it's a whole body workout as usual. I like to cover everything more or less in one go because it's more efficient and you kind of get it done with. But this workout is going to be really challenging because we're doing it in four couplets. So back to back two exercises and we're gonna run through each couplet three times. And rather than just take a straight break in between couplets, then we're actually doing what I usually call like a bridging exercise. And this is something that focuses more on either core or glutes or some kind of accessory exercise. And uh, the original workout was on my blog, myomytv.com or myomyfitness.com as it is now. The link is below, but also is a description of how I've basically modified it. I've changed it about a little bit. So I'm going to run through the different exercises just to show you what I've done. And it'll also give you a chance to know what these exercises are that we're doing today. And obviously I'll remind you as we go through it. Then we'll get into our warm up. So first of all, um, let's see, uh, we're gonna do goblet, squat into press so that's fairly straightforward holding your kettlebell or dumbbell you're going to do one squat and then use two hands to press the weight up overhead back down to this position and back into your squat so you're just holding it in a goblet rack throughout um, either flipped upside down if that's more comfortable if that's the style of bell you have if you've more of a outward handle you can hold by the handles or the horns and press that way then into two hand swing, so swing we know, two hands, snap the hips. So then three rounds of those two exercises in intervals of 25 and 35, 25 rest, 35 effort. It doesn't sound like that bad, but it will be that bad. Then into a core exercise, it's a shoulder tap, and you're just alternating into, you're in your high plank, wide stance with the feet, you're going to reach with one hand to the opposite shoulder, tap and back down, tap and back down. And we're doing one set of 30 seconds of that. Then I'm gonna restart the timer for the intervals and we're going into the next two exercises, which are alternating row. So you're actually uh, either you're bent over um, just free or you can hold on to something like a chair or a box, put one hand on it and then swap hands. So you're actually going to row, set the weight down, or swap hands down there, then row with the other side. So you're just rowing back and forth. Now, the next exercise originally was the, the reptile push-up, or it can be called Spider-Man push-up, um, where <laughs> I can't even do any of these. So it's going into your push-up, but bringing your leg up at the same time, then alternating which leg comes up and down. You can totally do that, that was in the original, but if you're like me, I'm a little bit dubious of that one because I know how hard that one is and I'd rather just keep going with something I can do. So what I'm going to be doing is a what I call a super plank climber and it's actually not as bad as it sounds. Plank climbers, you're going from a, a low plank to high plank, up and down, but, and you're doing that for the whole interval, but if you want to do this version, it, I find it gives you a little bit of a break. So it's every time you come up to the high plank, you do one push up, then you go back down, back up again, one push up. It kind of breaks up both the push ups and the plank climbers. So if you want to do that instead, go ahead. Um, then, so that was that couplet. Now the next uh, bridging exercise is the glute march and you can do this as a glute bridge so lying on the ground or you can do it as a hip thrust in, uh, in your hip thrust position so I'll show you in the hip thrust position and basically you're going to bridge out with both feet and then you're going to take one foot up keeping your hips nice and level place that foot down again and basically alternate side to side keeping the hips up as much as you can. Try not to let them sag side to side. And we're doing one set of 30 seconds of those. 
like I say, you can do the same thing as a, a bridge on the floor. Um, third couplet is, you're gonna hate me for this one. I'm like, why didn't I change this one? Okay, so it's vertical pull burpee, a vertical swing as I used to call it. So you're in your deadlift position. You're gonna do basically an upright row, up all the way up overhead, changing the position so your thumbs are underneath. And then as you're coming down, you're going back, just rotating your hands through the handles, all the way down to the ground. And then you can step back or jump back or not, don't do anything back, but you don't have to do the burpee part, but jump into your burpee, back up, reset into your deadlift, and then back up into this. Now, you don't have to go all the way up. You don't have to do the, over, the upright row part. You can just do a deadlift. So deadlift burpee, or just deadlifts, right? Or you could do a goblet clean burpee. So you're going into a goblet clean, and back down again, then burpee, goblet clean, like that. But if you want to do the original, and what I'm doing is the uh, vertical pull burpee, is death. So then coupled with that, as if that wasn't bad enough on its own, we're doing side to side step overs on the bench. One foot, stepping up and over, switching feet as you do. And a little tip, which I try to say during it and then I'm out of breath, so hopefully this, I try to keep my weight over the bench so that I'm not shifting off the bench each time. And I find it makes it more safe because you're stabilizing here and just tapping either side. So you're really stable in the middle um, so that you're not like going side to side. And the risk is obviously to knock this over and you don't want that. Um, instead of that, if you don't want to do those, then I would do something, you could do some other kind of cardio. You could do a, a regular kettlebell swing. You could do, if you have a jump rope, just do like jogging or high knees or whatever, or a mountain climber. I think I would, I don't know which is better, a mountain climber or side to side step overs. Then, after that couplet, our next core exercise is a diagonal knee tuck. So you're back in your high plank position. Feet are narrow this time, bringing one knee to the opposite elbow and back. Then alternating that side to side. Use your breath to exhale each time the knee's coming up. Because that will, if you're breathing with your abs, get a nice contraction of the abs as you're squeezing. Just kind of time that. Okay, one set of 30 seconds. Next up, our final couplet is a new one, which wasn't in the original at all. And uh, instead of Renegade Row, I decided to put bicep curls in. I thought this would be lots of fun. Um, so essentially, for the, you're in a deep squat position or you can sit on a very low box or like, you know, if you have a, a yoga block, you could sit on it. But basically, you want to hold your kettlebell or two dumbbells or whatever in position. I'm going to hold these by the horns, going down into my deep squat. Knee or elbows against my knees, keeping my chest really upright. I'm going to lower the kettlebell down and just curl it from the bottom squat position. I'm doing this for the time, and yes, that's death. So just do what you can. If your kettlebell's really light, you could slow your reps down a little bit for these. Um, if your kettlebell is pretty heavy, then aim for somewhere between eight to ten, eight to twelve reps for the time interval. Like it would be really hard to do way more than that. So that's the first exercise, and then the final exercise is total death. It is called, or I call it, the two sumo jump burpee. Now you, it's your choice whether you add a push up to the burpee or not, and whether or not you jump at the end. But you want to take a really wide stance, hence the sumo squat. You're going to do a slight little jump, two jumps, then into your burpee, plus or minus a push up, then jump the feet in wide again, bring your chest up, and again back to your little jumps. It doesn't have to be a high squat jump, it can just be a little bit of a tap off the ground 
or just do two sumo squats rather than jumping. Just do one, two, back down into a burpee and back up again, okay? A little bit easier. Um, if you wanna do your burpee off a bench, elevate the hands. That is a great way to regress those. Okay, so then that's us completed with all of our couplets. The final, final exercise in the original was a windmill. Feel free to do those. Um, a little more um, inclusive of everyone, one that I think is really useful, the windmill requires a learning curve, but this one does not. If you want to hold a light-ish weight, or depending if you're really advanced, an overhead position, we're going to do an overhead carry, one set of 30 seconds each side. You can do more than one set, probably two is like just fine. One is fine too after all this, just, you know, a little bit of stability work in the overhead position. You want to lock your arm out in this position, keep your elbow in, or your bicep in line with your ear. You want to try not to overly arch into it, just so you're directing the weight down through your body, to right way down to the floor, trying to keep alignment. And either you can stay still for 30 seconds or just walk around. If you've not much room, just walk back and forward or round in a circle and keep your elbow locked out throughout this exercise. And that's our workout. So hopefully that looks good to everybody. I know it's kind of a marathon one. It is only going to be about 30 minutes, so it shouldn't be too bad. What's going to be the hard thing is going from the couplets into the bridging exercises, getting a little bit of a breath back and then back into more couplets. So let's see who's here. Um, Sophia's here. Um, I have sprained my ankle. Do you think I can still train? I wouldn't do the jumps, Dev, and I don't know if you can train. Just see how you feel after maybe a warm up. Um, but if it's so bad you can't walk on it, then probably I would sit it out. Maybe do some push ups or something. Um, swings might be all right. So some exercises might be okay. Um, just go by how you feel yourself. Sherry is here. Please mention the weights of the kettlebells. Okay, um, all, like which ones I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the 12, which is the blue, and possibly drop down to the eight, depending on. And uh, this one here is a 16, and I might use a 20, which is just pure black, uh, for swings. So we'll see how that goes. For, oh, for curls, I might drop down to the 14, which is a smaller black one but it's not a very comfortable one, so that's mainly is going to be the 12 and 16. All right, everyone, let's get into your warm up and then we'll begin. So let's do it. Body weight squats to start with and hopefully everyone can hear me okay. I have moved the microphone around. <laughs> it's a bit further away actually, but if um, hopefully I'm clear, but when the fan goes on, sometimes it interferes with how I sound in the background. So let's do body weight squats. We're gonna do 10 and then we'll do some hip opening and some nice plank walkouts. In three, two, one, 10 reps of these, off we go. One, two, three, four, five, sinking down really low, as low as you can go, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So now we're gonna walk out, we're gonna, in a plank position, and do some hip opening stuff, thoracic rotations, and just follow along. So hands down to the ground, walk yourself out into a high plank, bring one foot up, right foot up toward the right hand, left knee down to the ground, then lift one, the right hand, waving around to the right side, watching your hand as you go, just to get some rotation. Sweep this leg back and bring the other leg up the other side. Rotate it that way. And now into your plank position. You wanna just go down into a, just a lower, almost like an upward dog position. And then you're gonna send your hips back up like a downward dog. Feet wide, walk your hands back up. 
And we're going to repeat that um, two more times so that we're getting the whole body really warmed up. Okay, back down again. Walk out. One foot up. Rotate round. Back round to the floor. Sweep that leg back. Bring the other leg forward. And repeat on the other side. Into your high plank. Bring yourself down onto the floor. Lowering nice and slowly. Go up into kind of an upward dog or lower back extension. Then bring your feet up. Pipe your butt in the air and walk your hands back up. This plank walk position in the pike is just really good for warming up your shoulders and upper body. Back down again for the last one and we'll do some calf stretching um, on our way back up. So walking back out into your high plank, foot up, rotate round and the other side. Now, from here, go back down into your lower back extension, bridge or push up. Then, pipe your butt in the air, right? Keep your feet a little bit narrower this time. Go right the way up on your tiptoes, all the way up, push, push, push. And then, quickly sink those heels down toward the floor and pedal your feet. Really nice stretch through the calves. Now, come back up onto your tiptoes and plant those heels again. Pedal your feet and now take a wider stance and walk your hands back up to the beginning to standing. Shake your arms out and now just to complete this we will take a little bit of a step and quad stretch. So one step, reach around, pull the other side and take a little bit of a stretch through the front of the leg then step and do it on the other side and just alternate side to side only enough and we'll do 10 or so in total i may have done four already but let's keep going so i'm a terrible accounting but say two more bring your knee in so you're not the knee isn't way out bring it in and rest there so if you, if you need to warm up more or roll or do anything that you like to do then you can pause the video but let's keep going now into our first couplet so remember it is um i <laughs> see your comments there so um we'll just go into 25 seconds you'll hear first of all the first beat is our rest or setup going to do goblet squat to press um you should be fine. Sophia, you should be fine if you tried this couplet. It might be fine. I would say the main thing is that it's going to be any jumps or fast paced things where you're coming off the ground. So the side to side step overs, no. <laughs> Not for a sprain. Um, so maybe for the vertical, yeah, you might be able to do something there um, like, a de like a deadlift or um, a swing, another swing there instead, instead of side to sides and just avoid the, the burpee part, the actual jumping back, that might bother it. And uh, yeah, let's go. First beat you'll hear, set up, second beat we start. I'm going to put the fan on now because it's deadly in here, it's so humid. Okay. 10 seconds into our goblet squat to press and then we're doing our kettlebell swing after that. Three, two, one, off we go. So as you're squatting, squat between your feet, keep your chest up, just so you're in position for press. Driving with your glutes, keep your whole foot planted on the ground, Nice steady pace, depending on the weight you're doing. We're eight seconds left. Nearly there. And rest. So, getting prepared for our two-handed swing. 
start these with the 20. Let's <laughs> see how I go. Whew. It's hot. 10 seconds. All right, so get set up for your swing. <clears throat> Three. And there we go. High back, snap those hips forward. Always wait for your arms to push you back. Ten. Maybe there. Two. One. Rest. So, back into goblet. Double squats to press. Ten seconds. In five. Double squat position. Off we go. Nice deep squats, driving up to standing, then press. two-handed swing. Ten seconds. That's tough already. <laughs> okay, three and off we go. Keep your big toes down. really close to you. Nearly there. Eight seconds. A few more reps. And rest. Last killer. Determined to do all of this this first round with these heavier ones. Swing. Ten seconds. And then we get a wee bit of a breather. Three. Off we go.
take a quick breather, right? And then we're going into our first core exercise, which is our shoulder tap plank. I just realized I'm supposed to get myself the a towel because I had a, a sweat storm into my eyes the other day and uh, it was not pleasant. But I forgot. Right, 30 seconds. Gonna do it on my other timer here on my phone. When you're tapping your shoulder, it's not like this, right? Not really fast. You wanna make it as controlled as possible um, because this is an anti rotation exercise. So the point of it is when you're on the three points of contact with one hand and you're doing this, is to stop yourself from shifting rotating in the middle, right? So try to focus on that. And if you need to take a break, then do. But it's, you know, 30 seconds. It shouldn't be too bad, right? <laughs> it's only one set. So let's do this. Three, two, one, and off we go. Tap and down. Tap and down. Wider stance with the legs will make it easier. Halfway. Eight seconds. Last three. And rest. Okay. Now, now we're going into our second couplet. So a refresh is the alternating row. So you're in a bend over position and then a super plank climber. So in the low plank, stepping up into the high plank, then do one push up, then step back down with your hands into the low plank. And every time you come up again, you do one push up. Alternatively, you can do reptile or Spider-Man push ups, or you can do any combination of those. So, then we're doing three cycles of those. Three rep, or three rounds. Alternating row is coming up first. So this is our first body weight exercise, or a couplet. In five, into your bent over position, nice hinge back, and away we go. Again, with this row, you want to try to minimize how much rotation is going on in your torso, because you want to really just focus on the upper back, letting the shoulder blade glide as it rows. Ten seconds. Last three. And rest. Okay. Super plank climber or whatever you're doing. Getting set up in about ten seconds. We'll get going. Back to alternate 
alternating row. This one's tough. Five, really tough on the upper body. Okay, two, one, and row. Steady tempo, 10 seconds left. Last three, and this. So we're going back into our push up variation plank climber to push up. Whew. This is a killer. All right, into position, in five seconds we start, three, Alternating row, three, two, one, off we go. Plank climbers, push out too deadly. Ten. Then five, four, three. If you need to, you can, once you're in your high plank, you can do your push ups from your knees and then back up to your plank climber, or you can do the whole thing from your knees. <laughs> 10 seconds. Whew. Last five. Two, one, and rest. Okay. Okay, in the original, um, we would have had to do a plank hold position here, which was the, the diagonal knee tuck, but I've put it later, so that it's not right after we do plank climbers and push-ups. So now we get the upper body a rest, and we're gonna do glute marches, and uh, wrong one. The idea is that you don't rock your hips, you keep your hips extended throughout, nice flat uh, core, so like no arching through the chest, keep that nice and flush, just so you're really focusing on that positioning and then introducing a, a dynamic element to prevent the hips from you know, rocking and sagging from side to side. It's hard, um, it can be hard, depending on 
your uh, control of this. So even if you only do a few reps and then kind of goes a bit sideways, don't worry, take a little bit of a break and then just regroup and do some more for the remainder of the 30 seconds. So I'm gonna do it in a hip thrust position, but you can do it on the floor completely um, in a glute bridge. And in, we're gonna count down and then begin the timer. In three, two, one, off we go. Into our bridge, one foot up and down, nice and controlled. You're trying not to sag at the hips. You can look down with your eyes just to see what's happening. Sometimes we think one thing is happening. We've only got about 10 seconds left. Just nice and controlled. Oh, nearly there. And rest there. Okay. Hopefully everyone's holding up okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, third couplet. Uh, we're going to do, oh, this is going to be a killer couplet, right? So let's just mentally prepare a little bit for it. It's vertical pull burpee, or it could be a deadlift burpee, could be a goblet clean and then burpee. It could be any of those without the burpee, right? And then side to side step over. Side to side on the bench. If you're not doing that, then I would say honestly a, a swing. Like any of whatever your favorite swing is, do that. All right. I'm dreading it. I wish I could have swing instead of this. So a vertical pull. I will be using a twelve my nice smooth handles. These handles are a bit rough for the little bit of twisting goes on. Um, so these are nice steel. Okay, let's begin. Hopefully you're ready. I'm kind of not ready, but I have to keep going, right? Let's do it. No point complaining. I'm the one who designed this thing, so. All right, vertical thing. Ten. So no matter what you're doing, keep the kettlebell between your feet, bring down into the deadlift position. Three. And drive with the legs, either up overhead or just to wherever. If you want to do a burpee or something, you can step back into it, it might be better. Sophia, for your handle. into vertical pull burpees. Five. And off 
we go. Coming back up from the burpee. Feet planted, then chest up to bring the hips back down into a good position to drive up. Steady pace, I say, and then I stop. We've got 10 seconds left. Last three. And rest. One more round of those. Getting ready into position. Exercise of this one. Final one. Seems like the longest interval. Ten, ten seconds now. Three. Thank goodness. That's over. I was dreading that one. I still got one more couplet to go and two more um, single exercises. So for this next one, we're back in our plank position, high plank, diagonal knee tuck, knee underneath to opposite shoulder, alternating for the time. The time is 30 seconds. So uh, we have cherry and burpee is a real killer. Yes, and we have another one coming up. We have another burpee coming up. All right, diagonal knee tuck. Right before I just completely give up on this whole thing, let's do have something nearby that you can elevate your hands on, just in case you got really tired and you want to keep going. You can always stop as well. Okay, in three, two, one. And off we go. Diagonal knee tuck for 30 seconds. Use your breath. Exhale. Each time your knee comes up. Knee 
really just engaging those abs. Eight seconds. Three. And rest. Okay, so next uh, final couplet we have our squat bicep curls. So if you have a kettlebell, use that. If you don't, um, you might have you might have one kettlebell that's light, um, like this one. Now something you could do is it's not perfect because we have three rounds. But if you want to estimate on one side, just do curls on uh, one side, then switch, you know, at a, at like a after eight reps, and then just keep doing that <laughs> through the interval. And it might work out okay. Or if you have two dumbbells, just do double standing double ones if you want to do curls. You can also do this one standing if you can't get into the position in a squat. All right, so squat curls or death. Um, I'm going to start with my 16 and then have this nearby and probably this nearby. It'll probably end up being a drop set. <laughs> it was that's good too. You could do that. And then, oh, our two jump burpee is our sumo jump or just a sumo squat, right? A slight jump or you can go into a squat and then do a burpee with or without a push up, up to you. Elevated or not elevated and um, and with or without a jump, so lots of options, lots of options to make it good, right? Here we go. And no one's going to regret this. So get into, <coughs> I like to get into the, oops, the squat position first at around five seconds and then go from there. Okay, five seconds, nice deep squat. Tip the kettlebell forward, handle forward, and then chest up on row, or not row, it's curl. If you're running out of steam, just breathe. Like if you're doing eight to 12 reps, like that's probably fine. I haven't done curls in ages, so this is gonna be bad tomorrow. 10 seconds. <laughs> Last three. Come on. And rest. Yeah, we'll use that one next time. Okay, we're into our burpee. Two little jumps. Keep that there in case I need to go on that. Ten seconds. Wide stance. Light jump and then burpee. Five. And away we go. One, two jumps into burpee. Two jumps and burpee. Each time, come back up to the chest up position. Just like your vertical pull. Past death for my legs. <laughs> oh my. Ten seconds. like an elephant right now, stomping around. Okay, that's way hard. That's way, 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 way harder than I thought. Okay, back to curls. I'm gonna do my 12 this time. 10 seconds, once again, into the squat position, and then start going. Okay, four, three, and off we go. A little bit harder to do these with the competition bells because of the giant bulk. So you want to try to get your arms straight each time. Nice steady pace if you can, right? Last ten. Last ten. Last three. Arms, 
the arms. Shake the mice. Okay. Burpees again. I want to go up in this. Ten seconds. I'm not going to be a martyr today. Five. Right. Ready? And second round. Here we go. Well, this is the second round. We're already halfway through it. Well, that was nice. Surprise. I forgot it. We're halfway through this. But Jump. Just very shallow. Ten seconds. Three. Right. Oh my goodness. One more run out of this. We're on a home run here. Home straight, whatever. Home run. Hypoxia. Okay. Five seconds, head into position, and off we go. Really bring that handle right up towards your chest. It won't touch your chest, but you want it that height. seconds. Five. That's ten. And thank goodness that's over. Right, one more exercise of this and then we can rest for a minute before our final, our final accessory exercise, overhead carries. Okay, ten. We've got this, and away we go. Two little jumps. We got it. Okay, we're at uh, ten seconds. static position or if you're a little bit more ahead of that you can add a walk okay and advance this by the weight or time right so I don't see any point in going more than 30 seconds to be honest see who's here somebody else come Sophia stepping um, I'm normally loving burpee and going to stop early my food is killing me uh, brilliant work as always Sorry about that. Sophia has a bummer. Wiggle angle. Take care. Elevated ice rest. Okay. Let's do our red thing. And we will go into one set. So you want to rack a weight that you want to hold. And uh, make sure it's not slipping off on your wrist, right? So if you get into your rack position, and then either uh, press or push press overhead, um, and we'll start in three, two, one, first side, off we go. Remember, keep yourself in like alignment, so you're not like arching way back, keep it over the hips. And then walk around if you feel good, just walk around. 
Maintain that elbow locked out. 10 seconds left. And we can rest there, lower down, and bring it down to the ground. So back to the other side then. And rack it on the other side, getting set. Oh, <laughs> darn fitbits. This is coming off funny then at the end. Right. Ready? Three, two, one, and off we go. Into position. Once you feel confident that you're in a good position, then try walking. Every so often, just have a little check with your elbow. Make sure it's still locked out. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one, and lower. And now we're done. <laughs> killer, killer, killer. All right. So let's do our cool line. That was a nice little exercise to have at the end just to give yourself that moment to let the heart rate calm down a bit. So the cool down itself doesn't need to be very long. If you like to stretch more than I'm going to, then go ahead. Um, right, so start down in our, um, lying flat, face down. Stretch through the quads, reach around one side. Other side. And from there, just push up onto your forearms. Right, when you're in this position, let yourself relax. So don't hold yourself uh, real stiff through the back, just let it relax. And but from here, you can either go up more into extension or send yourself back up onto your hands and knees and we'll do cat cow. So we're going to cow first of all, sinking the back down, tailbone and head looking up. And then you're just gonna go tucking the head down and the tailbone and arching through the back. A nice smooth movement, breathing, letting your breath help you relax, back up into cow, and back down into cat, looking up into cow, and back down into cat. From here, bring your toes together, knees out wide, hands out in front, and send yourself back to sit on top of your heels, stretch through your lats a little bit, Place your forehead on the floor and then just relax your whole body, taking three to four deep breaths in through your whole chest, down to your tailbone, and then exhale really slowly and let your muscles relax as you do. And we'll do three to four breaths, like I said. Off we go. finished your final breath and then just slowly come back up to standing sitting tall and we are done <laughs> well and truly done so how did everybody do that was a killer for me I don't know about everyone else but it was it was also very good because it was changing nice changes of pace throughout going from the couplets into the um
into the core exercises. So let's, uh, let's see, Barbara, killer workout started off so easy as always before uh, turning into death. Burpees and side to side step overs were particularly tough as well as the sumo jump burpees. The sumo jump burpees, yeah, right at the end. It's just, it's just cruel. So glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway. And despite my complaining throughout, I did enjoy it. I'm glad particularly that it's over. So I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And next week I'll be back uh, with another one. And you know, it may be another revisit or revamped one from the blog and if you have any favorites let me know you know go visit the blog run through some of the archives if there are hundreds of workouts there really and it would be really nice to bring them back into the light again and do them and uh, so let me know if you have any in particular in mind and i'll see what i can do with it <laughs> and anyway so next week as usual back around 8 a.m unless something comes up in the meantime just keep an eye on the channel and I shall see you soon.